Hey guys, we're here in Austin, Texas, talking with Jacob Kennard. We're gonna talk fabrication, welding, and twin cam choppers. Yep, be awkward. <laughs> So for anybody that hasn't met you, who are you? What do you do? That kind of deal. Uh, my name is Jacob Kennard from Austin, Texas, and I'm just a fabricator. Build fabricator? And, yeah, custom stuff. Cool. So uh, obviously you do a ton of welding, metalwork, fabrication. So like at what point in your life did you kind of get into doing that and start doing that? Uh, it's, I think it's been about like to actual fabrication. Like uh, with metalwork, it's been like 12 years. But I mean, I've built stuff my whole life. Like, okay. I mean, building just random sure. out of plywood like what got you was there was there anything initially that got you started into like building things oh, and fabricating was there like a just shop classes just shop classes yeah i mean as soon as i could take a shop class in middle school i was in okay and took every single one all the way through high school and multiple like i just loved it okay so the yeah. first first shop class kind of yeah. kicked it off and ever since yep. so cool how many how many years would that be then that you've been doing some form of oh total shit um like 30 okay probably so like a long ass time yeah like 20 28 to 30 probably okay yeah. so and obviously the big reason i'm here is like motorcycles so you obviously started all this like metal fabrication and welding stuff so yeah. what point did that meet the motorcycle world uh about four years ago now three or four years okay like heavy you know like not just bolting apart on a bike when did you start building your first bike uh in 2020 Okay. Yeah. Because you've done, you said, you said earlier you've done Born Free Eagle. This will be the third year in a row? This right? will be the third. The first two bikes were for uh, People's Champs. Okay. And then um, this one's for Born Free as an invited builder. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's uh, jump into your chopper. <laughs> So uh, we'll get into your chopper. So cool. when you go to do a build like this, you have like a high level like concept or idea. How does that usually work um, in terms of like that creative process? Do you know you have a frame that wants to look a certain way or do you know you have like a motor and certain parts you want all to work together? Kind of walk us through that process and how that works. Um, well, specifically going into this bike, I had an idea for the frame. Okay. Um, coming from like a long time BMX background, I just, I don't know, fascination with double top tube bikes. They're okay. terrible to ride in BMX because all they do is bash up your ankles but they're they're really cool design wise okay and um so i wanted to do one i just had didn't have an idea of the motor and then just by chance i came across this one in trade for some uh, fabrication work on a buddy's bike and uh it kind of just it just lined up perfect with like the idea okay um from like the basics of how this specific uh motor out of a road glide with mounts it's okay. so simple okay um and it just worked perfect with the the twin top tube idea and it, it just kind of natural like it, from there at that point it like that was all fit. it needed and it was yeah running <laughs> and so when it comes to this frame, you've you've completely fabricated everything. You didn't like start with the frame and chop it up. You you made this from the ground up, correct? Correct. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, like all bent all the tubes, notched everything, welded everything. Yeah, all of it. Um, 
when it comes to sticking like a twin cam or I guess any kind of motor in a frame like this, what's what's the most what's the most difficult part of that? Is it just like getting the the mounts correct for how you want the frame to work? Or yeah, it's getting it mounted because uh, I didn't start with like a donor frame to mm -hmm. build a jig off of. Mm -hmm. So because it's easy when you have that because okay. you can put that in a fixture line up all the points and okay. then just you know pull the frame off and you have right where everything sits right but this uh i didn't have any of that i had just a motor like on a dolly and that was okay it. so i just had to i had to figure out like all right what's the center of the motor like mm -hmm. where the center of the mounts like all this okay. and that and float it figure out how to float it over the frame fixture but not be in my way of building the frame that makes sense okay it was that part sucked the beast yeah and then I guess obviously with the double backbone, I probably made that probably made some extra work for fabricating the tank as well. Then correct? Yeah, that uh, I was so blinded by just kind of like, oh, this is gonna be fun, awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, when I went to go mount the tanks, I was regretting every bit of it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just it's you don't think about the simple things about like all of a sudden you're not mounting a tank and like off the center where it's symmetrical, right? All mm -hmm. the weights even. Okay. And now you have the majority of it hanging off one tube and you're like, all right, so what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. Like, how do I keep them together? Hence the little, you know, bonus strap in the front. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah. So did you, when it comes to the tank, did you, do you start with the tank there and then like split it in half or you just fa fabricate like two separate pieces? How does that work? Um, I started with a tank shell, like you can buy okay. just a shell. Okay. And then I chopped it down to be the width I wanted. And then um, since it was already cut in half, it's, you know, it's where I need it. Then, yep. then I just did the rest of the sheet metal myself. Okay. Cool. I just made my own pressed dies and for the tunnel and just everything. All right. Yeah. And you fabricated, I guess, pretty much everything on this bike tank, frame, fender, seat pan, I assume probably like the struts for your fender. Yeah, um, all the struts, every little gusset on here, like if I didn't uh, hand cut or make something, like I drew it in like CAD and had them laser cut and stuff okay. like that. So that everything was real precise, you know, and like repeatable. Nice. Um, and then it's also, there was like kind of like a natural theme that was occurring with everything. So it kind of like was able to carry it through, you know, that's why all the gussets have a similar cutout, mm -hmm. similar dimensions. So it's not like something sticks out like a sore yeah, thumb, it all you know, flows and blends. Yeah. Blends just together. like a, a continuity to it all it looked like it was intentional Okay. instead of just, uh, I'm building this and like so many people focus on like one little part yep. and then something else lacks. I'm like okay. try to just, keep it a, a, even so that makes sense uh you mentioned the twin cam was out of a rogue like correct yes yeah. and so what all have you done motor wise um the only thing well not only i guess actually there's a lot but um first off i carb converted it i used mm -hmm. electron carb okay. and then uh, a standalone uh daytona twin tech ignition okay so it because that it's real nice it just plugs into all the factory uh factory sensors okay so it's like five different plugs okay and you just plug that in swap a carb twist the dials to what they tell you in the manual and like it's fires right up. Like okay. It's super simple. Nice. And then, uh, did SNS cams and like cam chest plate, okay. oil pump, all the upgraded stuff in there. Okay. And you then, um, just replace the push rods. Okay. Do you remember what kit you went with by chance? Uh, it's the 585 easy starts. Okay. Um, because I, I being the little bit larger motor, the 103 inch, like it had the compression releases. Okay. And so I was either going to have to figure out how to, wire them into my ignition to mm -hmm. just like start when you hit the key yep. or just ditch them all together and the easy starts let you ditch them okay so it's just like a little centrifugal cam you know like all right cool. it, so far it works and then custom exhausted i assume you made the exhaust as well yes i did yeah uh i made the exhaust um using uh they're shogun cuts like um they're from jesse like at west okay. coast shoppers like okay. he uh, he works with Tycon Industries to, they're a little cast um, pie cut, you know, okay. they're cast stainless and then they machine them and polish them and then they're just individual, they kind of almost like locked together. Okay, I got and you. And so they're, they're awesome. It's a cool look with the little scallop cut and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Agreed. It's so much welding though. Oh yeah, that many, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. it's a lot. Each one, each joint is about uh, like a, I think a little over six inches long. Like if it's laid out straight. Yeah. And so there's that's... there's like at least thirty of yeah, them. I think that's a yeah. lot. That is a whole lot. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this might be a dumb question um, for you as a builder, huh. um, but so you convert 
a twin cam, like an electron, an EFI engine to carb. What's the big purpose of that? Is that just to help get rid of some of the electronics and clean it up some, or what's the big goal 100% there? for the electronics, okay. especially on like a, a rigid chopper, like a custom bike, because it's just so much extra shit you have to have. You have to have like, you know, the ECU and like everything that goes along with it. Like if it needs a BCM, like that's usually just like, I mean, it just, there's too much computer stuff. Okay. And this just lets it, like it, the ignition for this is a box, you know. Yeah, I remember seeing size it, of a uh, business card. One of your Instagram posts, you have it all like yeah. buried back in there. Yeah, yeah. under the seat. It's yeah. just, it's it, it just simplifies it all. And then the carb, um, I don't know. I like them. Like all my carb bikes, like have just always ran great. And okay, yeah, you yeah. see a lot of, especially you guys with choppers and even taking some of the newer motors. Yeah, they they take the EFI and put the carb on there. Um, so yeah, it's just proven, you know. Like yeah. it's, and if something does screw up, you just like pull the bowl off and clean it, or change yeah. a needle, or you know, just little things like that. Okay. And okay. this thing, like the electrons are so easy. Like going from here where we're flat you know, mm -hmm. geographically pretty yeah. much to California, like up in the mountains, like had to change nothing. Okay. Like it just starts the same, it automatically adjusts and you go oh, nice. when other people are sitting there trying to like, you know, put yeah. little screws on a carb on the side of the road. You're just like, good to go. Yeah, just send it. Cool. And then I guess you put mids on there as well. Did you fabricate the mids? Or? No, the, the mids are from uh, San Diego Customs. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chip and my buddy Wong, the old BMX like friend mm -hmm. that works there. Um, help me get those. And I don't know, out of all the mids I've seen for these bikes, like it's actually like the, it being a touring bagger motor, yeah, like was yeah. actually trickier than if it was a Dyna. Like there's okay. just with different mounting and stuff like that. And uh, all the mids are just kind of goofy out there yeah. that you see. They either mount real far over the primary and okay. real low. And, uh, or they just mount kind of like odd, you know, like okay. a little laser cut bracket or something like that. And um, these ones were just rad because it was all machined and yeah. built in as a whole transmission okay. cover. Do you, you know? ever consider going forwards over mids or was it 100% mids? No, nah, just mids. Yep. I'm not I'm not that tall, but I also like the feeling of the mids. Like it just feels yeah. more aggressive more. and like my feet feel awkward like yeah. out here. Yeah, and you can actually, I feel like use your feet and your weight a little more yeah. when you have like a little bit of, when you're mids and you actually can press down a yeah, little Yeah, and more. I feel like I use my feet and push on my pegs a lot yeah. more than maybe some, I don't, I don't know, maybe everyone does, but from coming from riding BMX for over 20 years, okay. I'm used to putting pedal yeah. pressure on things to turn and lean yeah, and all so that. You and I find ride, myself yeah. doing it, yeah. Like I kind of like hang off the side and okay. turns like it just, it feels better yeah, makes sense and then we've got our narrow glide front end with a 39 millimeter and everything um yep. did that come off of another harley or did you do any creating here or no i kind of just pieced it together um i'm pretty sure i got the trees from my buddy mike up in dallas okay um and then just had them chromed like just real just real simple mm -hmm. i knew i wanted like the stock harley front end i really like the narrow glide front end yeah, like, they just yeah. look nice agree and um with the dual disc i couldn't really do anything like crazy narrow you yeah. know like on a chopper and so um yeah i just did the like just put four over tubes like good springs and mm -hmm. um emulators in there like okay. the race tech ones I was like gonna that ask that. Setup, okay which is kind of goofy because the rigid bike but yeah yeah at least I the mean, suspension you have is as good as I it mean, can right? be. I mean, right, yeah. So, You're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> so just that, and then I just shaved off the uh, the fender mount on the lowers. Okay. And then... Um, Add a little fork brace there. Yeah, yeah, just a little fork brace. Yeah, from Power Plant. Like, it's just cool. It had, like, yeah. with the little, uh, you know, little scallop yep. shields on the front, just kind of different. And then you're running as Lindell rotors, right? Front yeah, right Lindell rotors and uh, wheels. And wheels. Yeah, 21 in the front okay, and so nice uh, 18 that. in the rear. Okay, nice. Yeah, it's nice. They're just, I mean, they're local. They're friends, you know, like uh, known them now for a good couple of years and they're just helpful as hell. Like, yeah, you've been seeing a lot of their stuff out there. Or at least I've yeah. been seeing a lot more of their stuff out there the last couple of years and it looks, it looks amazing. So. Yeah, they really upped liked up their game a lot they're just down in san marcus so like okay. 20 minutes from okay, here and i was close. doing like a side machine work for them for okay. a while just like if a special if a rotor need a special adapter ring or someone needed spacers cut down or whatever you know like so we just got a relationship with that and then ever since they've just 
yeah okay. they support the hell out of me with this type of stuff that's bad ass. great yeah and then what what's your uh, what's the whole riser handlebar set up here the risers are from uh bare knuckle paul okay yeah. um they're probably one of my favorite risers i've ever seen and i had like they were on like a list of parts that if i could if i was doing a bike that i wanted to buy okay like that's what's cool i finally got past building the first like bike and then i was like all right there's all these parts i want but i can't just buy everything yeah. and throw it all on something that has to be right and so those were like they might have been one of the first handful of things i bought knowing like okay. what i wanted to use them and they're just yeah they're just super nice they're solid yeah. as hell like all stainless yeah they look extremely clean and kind of yeah. like go with the flow of everything yeah and then the bars are uh I didn't make the bars because I didn't have a bender with the right uh, tight radius die. Okay. So these are made by um, uh, Opie, the Silverback Moto in Louisiana. Okay. okay. And uh, he's just a handlebar wizard, and he made those. And okay. One of the just few. Just to like my specs. Yeah. I just yeah. send them dimensions and. One of the few things you didn't actually make on the bike yeah, yourself. Yeah, it really is. Like that's like one of the very few things, and it's it's weird because I feel awkward doing that, mm -hmm. like having someone make some like yeah. a part for me, even if it is like that but if i'm going to it's gonna be like if when people ask me to build handlebars i tell them to contact him okay like it's that so type of thing so it's like yeah yeah 100 yeah, that makes sense when you've done so much on a bike you're trying to create a look and then you've got to turn part of that control over to somebody else yeah. I guess that that makes sense and it's 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 no offense to like big companies or anything like that but i wasn't i'm not gonna put like is like i love lucky dave's bars like mm -hmm. those bars are like one of my favorite rising uh -huh. bars ever but I wouldn't put them on this. Yeah. You know, like I want specifically someone that's like hand making them, yeah. not mass produced. You that know? makes sense. And then also my dimensions and everything I wanted. It's just, okay. you know. Cool. And you even did, did, you said you painted the frame earlier as well, correct? Yeah, I painted this frame. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, I really like the actual paint job on the tins. It's super clean and simple, which is. Cool my thing i think everybody on here probably gets sick of me sick of hearing me say that but who did the actual did you do this paint or somebody else no did i didn't do this i uh i guess like designed it and the okay. color just like on my ipad you know take a photo overlay it just okay. do yeah. tons of things and then um this guy ogre in california okay um he is a fighter pilot by day oh the is it paul paint, paint by ogre, paint by ogre. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go he's just a badass yeah and um he is part of like the like the Lindahl Brakes family, you okay. know, they're real tight with him and okay. stuff like that. Nice. And they, they've uh, like single-handedly like facilitated getting it done. Like they, they covered it and stuff like that because there's just, you know, building bikes is hard. It's expensive uh, and yeah. stressful. And so they, they stepped in and offered to uh, work with him to get that done. So I was like, here's, you know, the colors, the ideas. I even sent dimensions. Like I took like detailed photos. Oh, and wow. Yeah. Drew it up a like, you know, scale and stuff. And so he was like, oh, that makes my job easy. And yeah. but he just, yeah, he's just super quality. And he turned it around in like two weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. So fast. No yeah. waiting around. Yeah, it looks great. And it goes with the flow. I really like this. I went through grayish. so many. Uh, what, what do you call this? What's the top color? What do you call that? Uh, it's uh, Galaxy Gray. Galaxy Gray. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's almost like it's used. I think it's used on like some Toyotas and stuff. It's kind of like a Toyota, like okay. Gray. All right. Um, And then just the orange is just because it's it's so much a harley but also not yeah you know it's a harley motor in that and i it's it feels cheesy but i kind of really like a little nod to it you know yeah. so i still like harley orange i don't think it's dumb a lot yeah, of people yeah, are like yeah. oh like it's gross it's, it's and, classic yeah. yeah i like it so it's just like a nice little nod subtle touch you yeah. know um, 100%. the black and orange bars type of thing but it just it worked well i went i tried to come up with a bunch of different wild chopper style paint mm -hmm. jobs and it just none of them were really right and i was like all right let's just see if i can dumb it down cool man so uh i guess what's next for you uh with this bike or uh, you're obviously building one for uh born free coming yeah. up so, so um yeah this bike just kind of it led it opened up a whole lot of doors like it uh like during building it i got a job offer to work at west coast choppers mm -hmm. like and then um just kind of from there got me i never worked in a motorsports industry mm -hmm. like i always built stuff for theme parks museums yep. like heavily themed theatrical things you know and so it got me in a different mode and then it's good it got me in that mode because i got uh like from since this was in people's champ i didn't i didn't win people's champ mm -hmm. like but i showed up i did yeah. what i was supposed to do every it was well received everyone yeah. loved it you know um 
Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, that year it was definitely my favorite. And so. it was it was definitely different. You yeah. know, it was very it was stood out like a sore thumb yeah. compared to everything else. And then um, it ended up just working out really well because that the born free over the weekend they give us our little spot to put the the people champ bikes mm -hmm. and i ended up winning best modern okay at born nice. free so that's kind of like i'm not getting all the cash from winning people champ but that's kind of a giant award to yeah, win 100%. anything at born free you know yeah. like an actual plaque and so but then that just kind of opened up the door to now be an invited builder this year and like they don't give you a warning about that like i all of a sudden one day i was on instagram and just see like uh born free post and they're like oh we're about to announce the invited builders at like 8 p.m tonight or something like that uh, okay. i was like oh hell yeah i want to see who's in this year well, not even it. thinking <laughs> anything about it just because like i'm a nerd about like fabrication so i uh -huh. like following everyone like seeing yeah. finding new people so i was like all right let's see this yeah. is gonna be good and then uh like a minute after that like i see born free show following you i was all the fuck is this no fucking way and then i was like <laughs> oh just anxious and like yeah. just sweating and then all of a sudden like they announced it my name's on that list spelt wrong but my name was on the list <laughs> it's there and I'm like, it's me i'll take it <laughs> and um yeah so i'm um, just yeah and of course i accepted it i didn't have a i didn't have a single bit of a bike yet okay i didn't have parts saved up no nothing did you have an idea or a concept at least i just knew i wanted a shovel head that okay. was it that was the only thing and i knew i was just gonna build as much as i can and uh same thing kind of like this i build as much as i can and the parts i have to buy are from like my favorite builders yep. or favorite people like there you go because like building a shovel is different than building a twin cam because the parts are different you use on it mm -hmm. so you still see all these cool little things and cool shit people make but i can't use the shovel head parts on this yep and this on that so i keep them all in the back of my head so like when the time when comes, you have like, a project right, it works for i can finally yep. use this on something and then um yeah so cool man awesome well uh thanks for having us out and no doing the video and all and then i guess if anybody wants to reach out with you with questions or anything what's, what's the best way for them to do that uh instagram is the best way like i'm on there it's just uh, at jacob underscore canard cool. uh, c-o-n-a-r-d <laughs> um and uh yeah and then also this thing is loosely for sale at the moment so if anyone wants to buy it holler at me cool <laughs> see ya <laughs>
just super expensive, obviously, the trip down yeah. here, the hotel, all this camera security I'm using. And we're making this trip, we're going to do like two or three of them as we go, or right. two more as we go back, hopefully. But still, like, I'm doing all this for people and like, hey, what's a way I can like make a little money off of it? Like, if people want to support that. Mm -hmm. And I've thought, I've thought around the idea of like, hey, doing a Patreon, if you give like $2 a month or three, I don't know, it, to home about that, I'll put out like a lot more of like just unedited clips yeah. of just like us like shooting the shit to the floor. Yeah, well, that, that's also um, where you can just put like if something goes wild. Yeah. If you want to just start drinking and just get loose yep. and just start talking shit about something, like go for it. Yep. Like that's what Jace does, you know? Yeah, and like, and then like the, the Patreon stuff, the little like one dollar two dollars here and there like i mean i know like he also has used it to like fly people in that he wants to yeah well, i mean it like, adds up stuff. i mean if you have like because i mean i've got like only like, two thousand subscribers something like that now yeah if you get like oh yeah 10 percent of them is 200 people Dude. they're giving a hundred dollars a dollar a month that's like 200 dollars. so yeah, at least it'll cover your gas yeah. for some trips you 100%. know like um yeah yeah so that's the plan but that's cool cool nice. thanks man cool that was good that was far more relaxed than anything else. Yeah, dude, I, do. I want this to be. I'm too fat for choppers right now. <laughs> I, I look like an idiot on choppers. It's like, like fat man in a little coat yeah. kind of deal. I, I, that's how I look on choppers. And so eventually. This one's shape, bigger though. You probably wouldn't even gonna, be, look weird on it. I want to get me one of these um, at some point. The cam and it goes. Yeah, it just. Is that a little like, moto gadget? What is that? Is that? Yeah, it's a moto gadget. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I uh, I didn't have it on there at, at first, and when Biltwell came to town to do our interview for People's uh -huh. Fan, they're like, just go like 35 or 40 down the road, and uh, oh we're gonna God. hang out of a mini. Well, they're <laughs> yeah. like, we're gonna hang out a minivan, and like, cause they had like a full gimbal setup oh, out of nice. the side door yeah, minivan yeah. filming next to me.